Hey, what's up everybody? David here from PassionateDJ.com and I wanted to take a moment today to talk a little bit about digital audio and sound quality. Uh, this is a video that sort of coincides with uh, episode 14 of the Passionate DJ podcast, um, which is called All About Sound Quality. Uh, but these are some concepts that are a little more easily visualized than listened to um, as we talk about what really makes up digital audio, um, what is the difference between uh, these two terms here, we'll get to that in a moment, um, and then uh, to also provide examples of what uh, the audio data that is sort of taken out when you encode an mp3 um, at 320 uh, kilobit versus 192 and so on. Um, so I want to give you an actual uh, audio example so that you can hear. I'll show you how you can hear the difference between uh, those various encoded files. When we're dealing with digital audio, there are two terms that we concern ourselves with. Uh, that's primarily, and that's sample rate and bit rate. So if we think in terms of CD audio, you may have seen these numbers before. That's 44.1 kilohertz. Okay, that's the sample rate of a CD. Uh, bit rate, you might have seen 16-bit. Okay, we're not talking about Super Nintendo here. We're talking about 16-bit audio that you uh, find on CDs. So what this means, this is uh, 44.1 kilohertz means that there are 44,100 samples taken per second of audio when you're listening to uh, a CD. So uh, we're getting into the differences between analog and digital. So an analog signal, if we think of a sine wave, um, that kind of looks like a, a sideways S. So this is something like an analog signal. It's smooth, it's unending, um, it's not precise necessarily. Uh, it's just a signal, uh, just a wave. Okay, there are, there's an infinite um, flow here. But when we're talking about digital, um, digital doesn't really know what to do with this. Digital has to sample this in various spots, okay? So these ticks represent a little sample of audio that was taken at that point in the, uh, in the waveform. So the number of samples here in one second for CD audio, there would be uh, 44.1 or 44, uh, about 44,000 of those little snapshots taken that represent that audio data. So sample rate can be thought of as the um, the amount of audio data that's represented or the uh, the uh, how often the audio is represented. Uh, so that's how we get an analog to digital conversion. Uh, the bit rate refers uh, more to volume. So the 16 bit, that number comes from uh, 2 to the 16th power. Uh, that's 65, 536. Yep, had to check my notes. Okay. So that means that's the number of uh, different levels of volume that can be represented. So if we're looking at our, this is our sound file, we've got all these little samples that it's taken. Um, the number of volumes that can be represented, that is your bit rate or your bit depth. So this would be, you know, a bit rate of five. There's not very many volumes represented here, but just to make things nice and simple, there are 65,000 of those uh, when we're dealing with CD audio. So that's what we mean when we talk about sample rate and bit rate. So if you think about drawing a circle like this, and just pretend that I have the ability to draw an absolutely perfect circle. Um, this circle represents an analog signal. If you wanted to make a digital representation of that circle, you can't just draw a circle. You have to uh, basically take samples of it. This would be your representing your audio. If you wanted to draw the circle in, in digital, uh, instead of drawing a line, you would draw a series of points because this is what computers and electronics can understand and then you just sort of connect the dots. Okay, but what you end up with is a not quite a perfect circle. It's edgy, it's got all these flat spots on it. So if you wanted to make a more perfect circle, 
you might uh, take more samples. Okay, so when we play connect the dots with this and we have a lot more samples taken, these lines become a little more smooth. Now we've got a slightly more accurate circle. Well, maybe you want it smoother and so on. You just keep breaking it down. That's kind of a higher resolution or higher sample rate. That's how that works with audio. So the more samples you're taking within a second, uh, the more accurate the audio representation is of the analog signal. Um, now, up to a certain point, uh, humans can't distinguish that. So we eventually get to diminishing returns if you just keep taking more and more and more samples. Um, since it's just a representation of all these numbers, it's just a big math problem. Uh, digital never changes. That's why you can copy an MP3 from your phone to your computer to your iPod to your uh, upload it to your website and then your friend can download it and it's always going to sound basically the same. Well, it's always going to sound the same except for your listening environment. Um, and that's the benefit of digital. Each uh, program or MP3 encoder has its own algorithms that go through and remove what it considers to be the least important audio data first um, in order to make a smaller file size. So it's a compromise for file size. What really is the difference between a 320 and a 192? Well, we're going to go to the computer and listen to that in a moment. But basically, this is how I uh, am going to show you. I want to give you a little bit of kind of theory here. So if you have, let's get rid of our circles. If you have a line that represents uh, zero or silence, right? And then we have our sideways S sine wave type representation. You know, that looks something like this. It goes up, comes down, the same exact height. Obviously, I'm not perfect, but uh, just imagine that this is a perfect, you know, this is the same height as, this is just as high as this is deep. Okay, this represents zero or silence. And just to simplify it, let's say the, uh, the top line here and the bottom line, this represents 10 and minus 10. Okay, that, that doesn't have any real meaning other than this example, but so the top of these peaks here, this is 10, and the middle would be 5, this would be 0, this would be minus 5, minus 10, right? So what we do is we take uh, an exact copy of a song, right, uh, that's uncompressed, so we just take a, a straight wave file and then we duplicate it. And then you take that duplicate and you invert it. So if you were to invert this waveform, we have our line of silence down here. Instead of starting up and then going down, it would start down and go up. So it's basically the exact opposite of the first waveform. Okay. This waveform sounds exactly like this one. Okay, you're not going to be able to tell a difference. Uh, they're just slightly shifted, but if you overlay them, so if you take this inverted waveform, basically what you're doing is you're mixing them, so you end up with this. Okay, what you end up here is uh, with a, this is algebra, okay, this is a math problem. You have your tens and your minus tens, these are exact opposites. These are canceling out, okay? When this happens, you end up with zero. You have silence. So if you take one copy of a song, you take another copy and you invert it and you play them at the same time, you'll hear absolutely nothing, okay? Now, if you take, instead of that WAV file, if you have your, your base WAV file as a reference, and then you take, uh, say, a 320 kilobit MP3, and you, inst you overload the inverted 320 over that WAV file, then what you end up with instead of silence is the difference between the two. So as assuming that they're both playing in the exact uh, proper time, you know, perfectly lined up, um, instead of getting silence, you'll get whatever those differences were in between those, those digital artifacts, the stuff that was removed, uh, is going to come out, and that's the only thing that you will hear. Uh, so it's a pretty cool trick um, that I'm going to demonstrate for you now. And by the way, just as a side note, you can also use this if you have the appropriate uh, files for it, say um, a perfect uh, wave copy of a song, 
and um, an instrumental version of a song and the acapella, you might want to put the acapella over the song. You can make the original. Well, you can do that the other way around. If you have the full version of the song with the vocals and just the vocals, you could effectively remove the vocals from the song to create an instrumental. Uh, all things being equal, if you had perfect wave or you know perfect renditions of all of those, like I said, uncompressed files, otherwise you're going to get all this kind of noise and stuff that you do. But uh, for the demonstration, let's see what a uh, 320 kilobit MP3 sounds like, or the difference between that and its wave counterpart. Okay, so what we're looking at here is um, a song by Maceo Plex called Conjured Dreams. Now this, uh, what you're seeing here is a dual waveform, that's because this is a stereo file, so you've got your left channel and your right channel, to make one stereo song. So this is just the original wave file, this was bought straight from Beatport as a wave file, um, I'm assuming it came straight out of uh, the producer's workstation as this file. And then I took it, I purchased it from Beatport, I downloaded it, and then I used the lame MP3 encoder to make a 320 version, a 192 version, and a 96 bit rate version of the same song. So that way I'm using the same audio encoder um, because different MP3 uh, creation programs will kind of add their own color and use their own algorithms to come up with the end product. So this at least makes it consistent. And what I'm going to do is take this 320-bit uh, rate version. I'm going to go ahead and add it to my project here alongside the original WAV file. Now, if we just combine these two together, we're just going to end up with kind of a louder-sounding version of the same song. But if we do, as we talked earlier, and we invert one of them, what we're going to hear is the difference between the two. In other words, if you add this together with its opposite, anything that's left over should be the mathematical difference between those two songs, and then that way you can kind of hear what that difference is. So what I'm going to do is take this bottom track, and I'm selecting it. It looks like I'm selecting everything because of the top there, but I'm only selecting this bottom track. I'm going to go up here to, let's see, uh, effect, and invert. Okay, and like we talked about on the whiteboard, this is going to basically just take that same exact set of sound waves and it's going to put it up against the complete opposite version of that same thing. So if you're looking at these two side by side, zoomed out, you know, they look pretty much the same. Um, you can zoom way in and see that it kind of looks a little bit like my example. Let's see, these don't look like they're lined up the same. Maybe my, uh, yeah, okay. There's some silence at the beginning. Let's fix that first. Hopefully I can get this to line up perfectly or at least well enough for the purposes of this video. So as you're looking at this, you can kind of see uh, the peaks are coming together here in the middle and then when they're going down, it's going up here. So these are basically just canceling each other out. Okay. Um, now, if this were the wave file down here, in fact, let's do that first. I'm going to mute this. We're just going to pretend it doesn't exist for a minute. Uh, let's zoom back out so we can kind of get an idea of what we're doing here. I'm going to add that wave original wave version back in, and we'll do it with that first so that I can just make sure you see that, yes, it does, in fact, cancel out and you end up with nothing or silence. So I'll take this wave file, whoop, whoop, select the right tool first, easy from this side. Okay, select this entire waveform. I'm going to invert it. And now when we play these two exact same but completely opposite files on top of each other, we shouldn't end up with nothing. Okay, so it's playing right now. We've got silence. If I mute this inverted one, okay, so it only happens when this 
opposite version is unmuted. So that kind of proves the concept. Okay, you're, you're adding kind of like our plus 10, minus 10 example on the whiteboard. Uh, you just end up with a sum of nothing. So let's get rid of this and let's see what happens when we use the 320 kilobit version. What's left over between the two? Okay, so just kind of some sizzle. You can kind of hear the rhythm still. Um, not too much has come out of the original file. Uh, we can mute this to hear what it sounds like, and then I'll unmute it to so hear the difference. Okay, so that's what you end up with. Uh, that's the difference between a pure, unaltered, uncompressed, unmolested wave file versus the 320 kilobit version. Not too much uh, sound there at all, really. A lot of the stuff that it removes is uh, outside of the range of human hearing and that sort of thing, so that really helps. Um, now, what if we compare that to 192 bit rate version of the same song, inverted, of course? Um, then we'll see probably this one, um, it, I haven't listened to this beforehand, but my guess is going to be that it's going to be uh, noticeably louder because it's removing a lot more of the audio information um, when compared to a 320 kilobit version. So let's give it a try. I'll select this file. Uh, let's zoom in and see if they're out of alignment. Just make sure... Yeah, see, I can already tell these transients are lining up in different places, so that must be the product of my MP3 encoder. So, a little visual fix should be good enough for the purposes of this example. Zoom in, try to get it as close as I can. Okay, that looks pretty good. Whoa, 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 okay. Now let's zoom back out. Right, we play them on top of each other, they're just going to be loud. Right? We can see it clipping up here a little bit. That's too loud, okay? But that's because we're playing two copies of the same song for crying out loud. So let's take this other one and invert it. And we'll hear the difference just like with the 320. Give it a minute to do its processing. And let's see what the difference is really between a 320 and a 192. Wow, that's so much sound. Did I do that right? It's hard to believe. Let's check and make sure. Okay, I don't think I must not have inverted that the way I thought I did. how much of that's coming out that's just amazing let's take a look at this uh, 96 bit rate we're probably going to end up with almost two copies of the same song <laughs> I'll zoom in even farther. Look, you can even see the samples here that we were talking about when I drew the picture. These, that's your sample rate. Okay. There, we'll do it that way. And here's the difference. 